This lesson is going to talk about regression and the correlation coefficient. So the first thing we need to talk about is what we actually mean when we say regression. Regression is the line or curve that's going to explain our scatter plot the best. Um, it could potentially pass through a lot or some of the points, but it is also possible that it will pass through none of the points. And the, the line or the curve that we calculate when we do regression is going to be a prediction model. And then the scatter plot is our actual data that has been collected. So it's possible that you will see some questions that ask you to compare the actual with the predicted, and that equation is our prediction equation. So we're going to see how to do this with Desmos today. So this is our first example here. I already have my data in Desmos in a table. So go ahead and pause the video and put this meal cost in X and tip in Y. So now you have your table in Desmos. We're going to come into this second line here. And we're going to do our regression right in Desmos. I'm going to do Y1. And then I'm going to do the it's called a tilde. It looks like the funky little squiggle. If you hit shift and then the button next to number one underneath escape or in that top corner, that will get you the tilde. And then I'm going to look at my graph here. These points look like they are in a line. It looks very linear. So I'm going to type in a linear equation. So I'm going to do mx. Now, since I'm pulling from my data, I have to put x1 and then plus b. So you'll notice it shows up with this line. This is my prediction model. And then the green dots are the actual information. We're going to talk about what this means in just a second but we want our parameters. So our equation is going to be y equals 0 0.157. We'll do three decimal places here. And then that's my slope, so that's going to be multiplied by x, and then minus 0 0.299. So I'm going to come back to my document camera here because what it's asking us to do is they gave us a tip, so they want us to determine the cost of the meal. So they gave us a Y value. So $6.40 was the tip. And they want us to work backwards and predict what the meal cost was. So I'm going to add 0.299 first. So I'll have 6.699 equals 0.157x. And then I'm going to divide by 0.157. So my meal cost would have been $42 and 67 cents and then that's my equation i didn't realize i gave us a line for it Whoop. all right so that's our first one that's that was linear because of how the graph of the scatter plot looked to us here's our next one now i couldn't fit this in all one table so all of this data is one table in our Desmos plot. So go ahead and pause the video and put that into a table. 
I've already done that, so here is my table. And you'll notice these do not look linear. This looks like an exponential curve. So instead of typing in a linear function, when I do y1, I'm going to do y1 and my tilde. And then since this looks linear, I have to do a, or excuse me, since this looks exponential, not linear, I have to do an exponential equation, which is a times b raised to the power of x1 because I'm pulling from my data. So then here, this is my coefficient a, and this is what goes in the parentheses with x as the exponent. So my equation would be y equals 0 0.832 times 1.924 to the power of x. All right, so I'm going to leave this up for just a second because I want to use this statistics piece here. All right, so talking about our correlation coefficient, we talked a little bit about these numbers yesterday. We could have a number that was between 0 and 1. The closer it is to 1, the stronger the correlation. The closer it is to 0, the weaker the correlation. And if it's 0, then there is no correlation. So if we're looking at a linear relationship, I'm looking at the correlation coefficient of R. So these should look similar to what we looked at yesterday. Weak, they're very spread out. Strong, they're very close to being in a line. And again, I'm looking at that R value only if it's linear. If it's not linear, I'm going to look at R squared. So if it's quadratic or if it's exponential, I'm going to look at R squared. And this tells me the percentage of the data that is the closest to the actual regression equation that we've been given. So the higher the decimal, the closer it is to 1, the better the line is or the curve is as a predictor for that data. The closer it is to 0, the worse that function is to use for predicting the data itself. So if we come back to that last example, if you look here, my R squared value is 0.9927. That means 99.3% of the data is well explained or well predicted by my model. That is excellent. 99% of the data being explained means it's pretty close to being perfect. So we're going to go on to that next example that's above that R squared slide. The number of hours a student spends studying and the score they receive on the first five math tests. So pause, put that data into a table, and come back when you're ready. And I have mine ready to go. Now I do need to zoom out. All right, let's see. So this part here looks pretty linear to me, so I'm going to test a linear function first. And when I look at my R value here, it's 90% or excuse me, 81% accurate. The R value is really close to 1. So I'm going to say, let me just check 
and see if exponential might fit better. All right. Looking here at the r squared values, this is 81 point, or excuse me, 0 0.812. This is 0.814. So I'm okay in this case sticking with my linear function. So I'm going to write down this equation y equals 2.912x plus 86.794. I'm going to come back to my screen. So this is the equation we just found. They're telling us that our y value is 94. The person received a 94 on the test. So this is very similar to the one we did before. Oops. Oh, my Lanta, I'm writing everything backwards today. And I'm going to go ahead and start solving this. So I'm subtracting first. So 7.206 equals 2.912x. And then dividing tells me they spent about two and a half hours studying. And yes, I did round in that case. All right, so now we're going to move on to this sheet that I gave you. It might be helpful if you pause the video and go ahead and make a new Desmos slide or screen in your browser for each of these tables and then unpause the video after you have a new screen for each of these. So you'll have five screens open total, and we're just going to work through these questions together so that we make sure you have a good understanding of regression. So this is my first one. Bacteria present in a culture over five hours. X is hours, Y is bacteria, and our job is to find the model of best fit. Now, this looks really linear to me. So I'm going to go ahead and test my linear function. And it's almost perfect. If you look here, 0.9995 for an R value for my correlation coefficient is about as perfect as it can get with real life data. 99.9% .9 of my data is accurately represented by my prediction model. So that tells me this is pretty perfect. So my equation for number one would be y equals 54.314x plus 995.714. Done and done. All right, so moving on to the next one. This is the garden hose question. And you'll notice looking at my equation or looking at my scatter plot, there's only one option for an equation here. Now, this is where we have to be a little bit careful. Because this is quadratic, I have to make sure that I do x1 squared plus b times x1 plus c. So now you have to put your smarty pants on and remember what your standard form of a quadratic, standard form of an, a linear, and standard form of an exponential look like. So again, looking at that r squared value, 99.7% of my data is accurately represented by my predictor model. That means this is my equation. There's no other option. So 
using the correlation coefficient or the correlation data of R squared, we know that 99.7% of our data is accurately represented. So a quadratic is the best model to represent this data. So then I'm going to write down this equation because I'm looking here at question B. So y equals negative 0.381x squared plus 1.496x plus 0.155. So coming back to our screen, this question is saying we're standing 2.8 meters from the nozzle and we have to find the height. So this is an x value because this was x and this was y. So I'm substituting 2.8 in for x and I'm just going to open up my Desmo scientific calculator on my phone and show you really quick. So I would do negative 0 0.381 times 2.8 squared plus 1.496 times 2.8 plus 0 0.155. So we would assume that if we were standing 2.8 meters from the nozzle, the height would be 1.3. Now, since these are all one decimal place, our answer, if this was multiple choice, would probably only show us one decimal. I'm going to put 2 just to be safe. All right. So one thing I want to look at before we go to our next table in Desmos, this says exponential in the wording of the problem. It's in extremely important that we read these statements before we try to do any work with these regression models. So they're telling us right now that they want this to be an exponential model. All right. So our regression, or R squared, 98%, that's pretty darn good as well. So our equation would be y equals 5.22 times 0 0.75 to the power of x. Moving on to the next one. It says using a linear regression right in letter B. Let me go ahead and close these out. So since it says use linear regression, I'm going to do linear regression. And looking at this, these statistical pieces here, my correlation coefficient and my R squared, really good measure. So our, is our correlation strong? Yes, absolutely. Our R value is 0 0.998. That's very, very close to 1. And then using our model, predict the population in 2015. So I'm going to write down my equation first. And again, I'm just going to pull up my 
scientific calculator here and come back to my screen. So they want us to predict for 2015. Since we actually put in year values, the actual year value in for X, 84.91, I'm going to multiply that by 2015. And then I have to subtract 163766. Oops. So we would predict that it would be 700, or excuse me, 7,328 people. I can't have a decimal there because these are people, not money. And then the last one, we are throwing a pumpkin. Anytime something is being thrown or a ball is being hit or we're looking at water in a from a sprinkler because that is in the real world and gravity is involved it's gonna be a quadratic so y1 then i have a x1 squared plus b x1 plus C. All right. So there's my equation. My R squared is 0 0.9993. 99.9% .9 of my data is accurately represented with this equation. I think we're good. So there's my equation. Now you'll notice in part B it says find the angle for launching a pumpkin 400 feet. That's giving me the y value that I want. So I'm going to put in y equals 400 and I'm going to find these intersection points just like we did when we were doing nonlinear systems. So I would use an angle of 22.6 degrees or 63.8 degrees. And those would both get us a launch of 400 feet.